All right, let's just go ahead and get started. <clears throat> gotta clear the throat, you know, gotta get a nice, uh, a nice, uh, you know, announcer's voice, you know, all that. Gotta practice. Yeah, nah, man. Hold on one yeah. sec. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had to be as unprofessional as possible, like not clear your throat when I could, hey guys, <clears throat> hey, how's it going? This is a, this is six, wait, no, seven Shogun. <laughs> 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 yeah that's that's it man it's like what's going on guys <laughs> what the fuck was that uh hey uh <laughs> i'm it's, it's seven shoguns here uh samurai what's going on guys seven shoguns here back with another episode of weekly nerdy news the show we talk about all things video games and movies that happened this week and uh yeah we're back on episode five can you believe it? We're on. It's been five weeks since I started this. That's that's insanity to me. I thought I would be dead by now. Uh, but yeah, we're out here. Um, it's your host Ben. I'm not alone. I'm joined by some great guys. They're pretty cool and pretty nerdy, I guess. Who are we talking to? I'm not a nerd. I'm. I'm just a guy. This is sleep, and uh, I don't know why I came back to this. It's, <laughs> it's, we've already derailed. Nah, man, it's this is cool, right? This is fun. People, people listen to this sometimes, you know, like ten people. Yeah, man. <laughs> Whatever you say, man. <laughs> it's all the same person listening to it over and over again. <laughs> yeah, it's just like my brother just playing on a loop for like <laughs> all day, you know. Yeah. Well, thanks, bro. You're getting me those views. We're gonna, we're gonna make YouTube great again, man. <laughs> he has like 10 accounts he has 10 different accounts and he just subscribes on each one <laughs> <laughs> yeah man that way we can we can help pay for his college man you know get all this <laughs> that freaking ad revenue and, my, and our other host who are we talking to this is uh ninjax like uh windex yeah exactly i actually my co-workers literally made a little art thing that was my name in the style of the Windex logo. It's <laughs> actually kind of cool. You, you should you should totally sell that, and like you know, Ninjax in a bottle, and you spray it like ninjas come out. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like a just spray a bottle of Ninja Stars. Yeah, or make or it's that, like what? That sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen though. That's it's like any Ninja <laughs> Star. You just spray it, it's just like a bunch of little Ninja Stars <laughs> fly out in different colors. <laughs> no, nah, man, it's like uh, it's like ninja proofing. You know, you spray it in your window, and they just just can't come through. You know, keeps your house safe from uh, ninja attacks. I might yeah, need that know. depending on what was going on <laughs> in my back alley. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ! Yeah, probably. I uh, know, uh, man. They say, "Oh, wait, crap!" You sprayed it with ninjax. All right, just take the clothes off. They're not ninjas anymore, man. It doesn't work after that. <laughs> Did the clothes make the ninja, or the ninjas make the clothes? Yeah. The clothes make a ninja man. If you're not wearing ninja clothes, then what are you? You're just a weirdo with a shuriken in your hand. Doesn't make any sense, bro. That whoa. You're a weeb. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Uh, it's actually been a pretty weeb week this week. Um, lots of Final Fantasy news. Uh, lots of Japanese uh, JRPG news. You know. Um, but beyond that, it's been pretty light this week. You know, everyone's been gearing up for the the big. Super Bowl, you know, the big American football game. Um, for those of you that are listening, that is not from America, which is probably no one, to, to, to be honest. But uh, yeah, um, that's this week. So we're getting ready for that, getting up for that. I'm going to watch it. Not, I'm going to watch the commercials for it, to be honest, actually. <laughs> so um, but that's going to, that's happening today. So we're going to going to kind of fly through this. The dark, there wasn't that much news, to be honest, anyway. So we'll kind of go through it. So first, real quick. The only movie news we have this week at all is an update for the Batman movie. We have some very sad and unfortunate news for everyone who's a Ben Affleck, a Ben Ben Affleck fan. Um, he's dead. No, no, yeah, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just kidding. He didn't die. No um, more Batfleck. Yeah, poor Batfleck, man. Um, no, he he backed out of directing the movie. Um, ben Affleck is an actor, as most people would realize, but he's also a really great director. He makes directed a bunch of good movies. Um, but um, he has stepped down from that role. He said that he can't act and direct um, at the caliber that Warner Brothers expects of him. So he stepped down. That's the official statement he put out <clears throat> for it. But there's been a lot of back and forth with him 
and Warner Brothers recently, and just the DC Cinematic Universe in general, that this kind of comes not as a surprise, but just as like a shock, just because it's like, man, how many hits can this universe take? Because I think one thing, if you've liked their films so far, you hate the films so far, I think they weren't that great. Most people can agree that Batman was the best part, and looking forward to that Batman movie made by Ben Affleck as Batman was going to be a big centerpiece for that universe, but now that could be taking a hit. I mean, what do you guys think of that? Uh, I feel as long as they find a competent director, then it won't matter that much. Because if they just get some no-name hack to do it because it's all they can find, then it's definitely going to be a problem. But I highly doubt that's going to be the situation. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Yeah, I agree. I think um, I think it'll probably be fine as long as they don't like screw up and hiring a new director and maybe uh affleck will actually like half direct it like a co-director whatever Hmm. so maybe he'll still have like a smaller role in it because he if he is like acting and i'm sure he has like some you know creative direction over his own character and like what he wants to do and stuff right well that was the that was the big thing is you know with ben affleck he's been wanting to to make batman the Batman movie for forever. He's a big Batman fan. Um, actually, the story goes, one of the reasons he did Daredevil back in 2003 was because that was the closest he could get to doing a Batman movie because um, he just loved that character so much. <clears throat> and when you look at the guy, you, you know, he's like basically Bruce Wayne in real life. He was made to play that character. So the, it's, it was he was supposed to write and direct the movie. Now, I'm assuming he's still writing it or he, he still wrote it. Like it's already been written um, somewhere. Him and Jeff Johns collabed on it. But as far as him writing and directing it and acting in it, um, he's still going to be to- doing two of those things, just writing and acting, because he won't be directing it. Um, now, if you believe the rumors out there, that a lot of that has to do with the fact that Warner Brothers has a lot of cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. You have a lot of people getting too involved with the movies and kind of messing it up. And so Ben Affleck is like, look, I can't make the movie I want to make because you guys keep coming in here and tell me, telling me what to do. So if that's the case... I feel like they might have to bring in someone who's less experienced because if they bring in like a big name director, like let's just say Christopher Nolan, for example, like you said, Christopher Nolan has a very specific direction that he's going to want to bring. So he's not going to listen to them saying, oh, we need to do this. He's going to say, no, I'm going to make my movie. You know what I mean? So they actually might bring someone who's less experienced or someone who can be, who can be molded that way <clears throat> if it's their vision. But I mean, but I also think DC right now has been having a lot of hard times, so bringing someone who's, who's a big name might like shut everyone up. You know, it might be like, oh yeah, we're we're still on track. You know, so I don't know. It could go either way with it, to be honest. No? Yeah, I can see what you mean about bringing in someone that's less experienced. Like the only problem I see with that, because they'll be less experienced, you might have actors that will second guess his decisions and stuff like that, and right. that's when stuff can go downhill. But you know, time will tell. We'll see what happens with that. Hmm. Cool. Any more thoughts on the movie at all, or on Batman, or DC as a, as a whole? Are you guys excited for Justice League or Wonder Woman or anything coming up? Uh, you know, man. Out of all of us, I'm probably the most DC fanboy there is, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll have to see. <laughs> even even you have given I mean, up hope. Nah, I haven't given up hope. All I'm saying is we've had one movie in the current DC universe. And it was okay. So we have to wait and see. Well, actually, we technically had three. Now we've had Man of Steel, Batman Superman, and Suicide Squad. That is true. I'm not counting Suicide Squad. That's <laughs> that, uh, I forgot about Man of Steel. That was my bad because that came out a long time ago. But uh, yeah, we don't, we don't talk about Suicide Squad. You just, just blocked it out. It was, it was that bad, right? Like I was thinking about it because I remember Jared Leto. Right, and then I forgot about it completely. So yeah, we don't we don't need to mess. We don't need to. What move were we talking about again? I don't think it exists. <laughs> I think you're just uh, I think you're just messing with me at this point. All right, all right. Well, well real quick, do you guys think because the Super Bowl is going to be starting here in, in a couple hours? Um, do you think we'll see any trailers for Wonder Woman or just League at the game? I think we're definitely going to see like Wonder Woman for sure. Yeah. Justice League, maybe there'll be like a really quick trailer, mm-hmm. or maybe there'll be like a little extra thing mixed in with the wonder woman thing but at this point i don't know if there's going to be a justice league one right now because that's not 
when is that coming out anyway justice league is coming out in november wonder woman though that's a good question hold on let me look it up real quick because i had it written down uh, that's coming out in june june 2nd um yeah so, so i can totally see wonder woman definitely making an appearance um justice league is still kind of far off but right yeah they might show like a little teaser thing but i don't know if they're gonna pay like obscene amounts of money to show like a 10 second clip you know yeah yeah it's freaking expensive this year five million for one minute of uh of commercial time it's freaking insanity oh fun fact too by the way which is kind of a cool fact and the one room is going to have some competition because it's the same day that uh captain underpants comes out so oh man i am damn ready dude. for that <laughs> That's gonna be some Man, stiff competition I'm gonna watch there. Both of those, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'll just watch. I'll just go back and forth between the two theaters. I don't like. They won't stop me. You I'll just, just watch them both at the same time. What are they gonna do? You literally walk out of Wonder Woman and be like, "I'm watching this movie." And like, no, you can't, sir. It's like, no, I'm watching it. Like, oh, you're right. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> just set up a series of mirrors and sit in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> watch both at the same time. Yeah, no, I, that's that's actually really cool. Um, that's like my childhood, basically. So I. I, I can't wait for that, which is weird that I would say I'm, I can't wait for Captain Underpants. <laughs> Just as much as I can't wait for freaking Wonder Woman. Like, that's such a weird comparison, but, you know. Do you know they're still making Captain Underpants books? I like, I thought they stopped, but they're still going on. Dude, I don't even know. Are they still making uh, making books? I figured they moved on from that. No, I'm pretty sure they are. Because I saw one recently that I had never seen before. I was like, what, what, what the hell is this? Did I miss something? But they they still exist. Yeah, cause I know they have like, well, it's not the same people, but like new books like that, like um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid and stuff like that, or the are kind of like the new versions of that that kids nowadays are reading. Nah, I mean they are still making. Like I just looked it up, the last one came out in 2015. What? So yeah, dude, like the Captain Underpants and the Sensational Saga of Sir Stinks a Lot. <laughs> I would so. read the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Maybe I am still a kid. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't aged. All right. Well, moving on from that. So that's it for movie news. I mean, it's really a pretty light week this this week, you guys. And this is going to happen from time to time. I think we might have to come up with, like, segments or just, like, stuff we do instead. Like, I don't know, like, trivia or something. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out later. But for now, we're going to move into gaming news and... Uh, Again, pretty light week this week. It hasn't been a whole lot. I'll probably start, sorry, probably start picking up next week. Next week we're going to have Neo, which is a big one people are looking forward to. Um, I'm looking forward to going to play the, the crap out of that game. And we also have, uh, as far as movies too, we're also going to have John Wick and Lego Batman. So we're probably going to have more stuff next week to talk about. So just just bear with us. Hold on for a second, you know. <clears throat> but um, this week was Final Fantasy week. Lots lots of Final Fantasy news. Um, this year in general is a big year for Square Enix. Uh, it's the 30th anniversary for Final Fantasy, which is crazy. It's been 30 years. Um, it's the 20th anniversary of Final Fantasy VII, so that lined up somehow. And it's also the 15th, 15th anniversary of Kingdom Hearts. So I don't know how the stars aligned in that way where all their big things happened in the same freaking year, but um, it's a pretty big year. And so Tuesday, yeah, the 31st of January, they actually had a uh, 30th anniversary event where they're going to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Final Fantasy and yada yada. So everyone was looking forward to it. I was I was looking forward to it. I had it on my calendar. I was excited. You know, um, they were going to announce. Well, people were thinking they were going to announce some uh, some seven remake news. Um, they were going to announce the city coming in the consoles. They were going to announce uh, 15 DLC. They were going to announce all this stuff. And then it happened, and they didn't announce that stuff <laughs> at all, really. Um, it was a lot of weird stuff. I actually have to page up. Um, I want to actually shout out to uh, Nova Crystallis. They're a big aggregator for a bunch of these new sources for Final Fantasy. So if you're into Final Fantasy, check them out. Um, but they actually have a collection of all announcements that they made. So I'm going to read through these real quick. Let me know if you guys would guys think this is cool or imagine this as the Final Fantasy 30th anniversary celebration, if you imagine this being there. <clears throat> okay. So, they're releasing a Final Fantasy-themed wine set. Uh, it's going to cost about 100,000 yen, which is equivalent to $800, which is a lot. Uh, they're going to come in two 
uh, Swarkovsky crystal glasses. Now, I don't think they're going to actually be crystal. I think they're just going to be like called crystal <laughs> and not be real crystal. But um, and they're also going to sell two cheaper wines. One of them called Ifrit, which is the red one, and the one of them called Shiva, which is the white one. Uh, that's coming at some point this year. They're releasing Mughal, Cactuar, and Chocobo-themed cakes. That's coming in June. Uh, they're having like a Final Fantasy XV piano collection. Um, and FF Brass, the Brazo musical tours will take place. Uh, let's see. Cup Noodle is going to release 15 new flavors of noodles. All those Cup Noodle lovers out there. <laughs> um, each one based on a classic Final Fantasy villain. And they're making a special fork, which is the hand. The handle shape is the ultimate weapon from Final Fantasy VII. So not only are you going to get the cup noodles you've always dreamed of, your Sephiroth flavored cup noodle or your, uh, <clears throat> uh, what are some other ones, uh, Kuja flavored cup noodles, you're also going to have a fork to eat it with, which is, I guess, cool. <laughs> I don't know. They're coming with new manga, uh, Final Fantasy Lost Strangers. This new manga series is going to start in Japan. Um, they're also making a TV show, Final Fantasy XIV Daddy of Light, <laughs> which is a... Uh, uh, 14 theme TV show tells the story of a father and son who bond through the game. So that's cool. Um, they're announcing a Final Fantasy, I think that's, yeah, 14 Escape Room in Japan. Um, the Sapporo Snow Festival in Japan, they're building like a FF7 snow sculpture based off of Cloud and Sephiroth, which they actually did this back when 7 first came out. So now they're doing it again, but like better. Um, there's a new Final Fantasy clothing line that's being started. And it looks like they said FF Exhibition will take place in Japan in 2018 to celebrate the series 30th anniversary. So they're going to have some kind of exhibition next year. It really just sounds like... And honestly, all these announcements seem like they aren't working on anything. So to distract us from that, they are just branching out into other venues like clothing food wine for whatever reason to distract us from that like i know they are working on stuff because uh one of the things you forgot to mention they uh announced that uh a remake of one of the games like what was it yeah final fantasy 12 uh hd remake is going to be coming out sometime this year uh they say in the first half of the year so they are doing stuff but uh the event seem kind of like an ad placement like yeah. they could have just had a commercial with all of this <laughs> yeah sort of like yeah. a big you know event that they hyped up and created a date for and had a stage and all this all this stuff yeah like you rent out a venue to tell people that you can buy their stuff when it comes out in stores that's you made people pay you to watch <laughs> your ad that's that's genius i never would have thought of it yeah but come on i mean it's just weird like I mean, this is this is the 30th anniversary, you know. Like when when a company hits 30, you know, there should be some kind of big thing. And people were thinking, oh, it's going to be like a big, you know, anniversary collector edition set that's going to have FF one through nine. It's going to have seven, eight, you know, uh, all of them. But then no, it's just like food and accessories, clothes. Um, yeah, to be fair, they they did announce the the uh, 12 remake is coming. Um, looks like the dates are, yeah, July 11th, uh, for us here and then July 13th for everyone else in Japan. Um, so that's kind of cool. And they also did make some 15, some 15, not some, bleh, some 15 DLC announcements, which we'll get into in a second. Cause they actually had a separate thing later to explain some of those things. Um, but it's just weird that the bulk of this announcement, the bulk of this, uh, conference basically was just like random merchandising stuff it, it, it kind of feels like they've like sold out which i don't know if i want to say that but you know it's just like what is this you know yeah because with how much work was put into it you know it was planned it's not like something that just happened last minute and they were just scrambling to throw something together they knew they were going to do this and they knew how they were going to do it and then they actually did it so it's <laughs> i don't really get it i mean yeah. They said this is just the beginning, which means they're going to do other stuff throughout the rest of the year. Yeah. But uh. that's the only silver lining to this is this is technically the uh, 
opening ceremony, as they're putting it. So we have, you know, it's just January. We have the rest of the year, so they could uh, be sh- preparing more stuff to show. Um, we actually get into it right now. So the, the 15 DLC they announced, they're releasing some more DLC, kind of fleshing out the other characters. Because if you play 15, um, I like the game as far as the combat, but it was the weakest story of Final Fantasy the entire series. It was the shortest one. It was only like 20 hours versus like, they usually like over 100 something. And if you played it, it felt kind of not fleshed out. You know, a lot of the story was kind of just thrown at you. It wasn't really explained. So this DLC is supposed to be explaining a lot of that stuff. So we're going to get a DLC release on the 21st of February. That's going to be like more like gameplay stuff, like costume packs and some other stuff. Um, And then on the 28th, we're going to get one of these big story ones that's going to focus on one of the characters named Gladio. Uh, That's coming on March 28th. And then they're listening to the next one, which is called um, uh, Prompto. That's for one of the other characters. That one's coming out in June. So they are kind of throughout the year sort of peppering in and explaining some more about 15. Um, it, but it just feels like, you know, this they still have 7 remake to show us stuff. Um, King March 3 is coming out, which we don't know if it's coming out this year, but it just feels like they're not really showing us a lot of stuff that we were looking forward to. So it just feels kind of strange, you know? But I mean, I, get, I guess you can say they're not trying to, like, they're not showing their hand from the get-go. They're trying to keep some secrets just to keep the hype going but to start it off with you can buy our cup of noodles <laughs> once right. they're out like that's i'm not gonna buy a cup of noodles with a final fantasy character on them like ah. unless that's all that's available but even then as soon as i finish eating it you know the cup's going in the trash nah so, man like, you can get like arden flavor you know and like garland flavor that's so great zephyroth flavor Dude, with my luck, I'll get the Ifrit, and then it won't even be spicy. So, I I, I don't know. I'm not. I just I want know. a fork. <laughs> yeah. the- oh, also, I don't know if it's true, because uh, I'm on Japan today. It said that for the fork, it's not even... It says 30 lucky folks that pre-order it will be chosen to receive the fork, which means it's oh. not, like, openly available. So not even gonna like sell them. It's just like you can win the fork. Yeah, I don't know if this is the only way to obtain it, but if so, you would have to pre-order it, and well, you have to buy a set of it. It's fifteen noodle set, mm-hmm. which uh, says here is a uh, six thousand eighty-five yen, which is about fifty-four dollars for fifteen packs of cup of noodles. So, I mean. If it's worth that much, you go for it. But then only 30 people that pre-order it will get this fork. And it's a 60 centimeter fork. And like they have a picture of it, like compared to the cup of noodles, this doesn't even fit in the cup. So you can't even use a like. So you're pre-ordering a fork. And you can't even use it. So. <laughs> See, I just think that's so strange. Like, why would you pre-order a cup of noodles? It's not like a video game release. You're not going to pre-order like. Put five dollars down and pre-order fifteen cups of noodles. Just get a freaking extra long fork, you know? Like I don't, I don't know. It just, it's just such a strange concept to me. Like I don't know why they would do this. But the fork does look pretty like, cool though. Be cool, uh, like this is, this you is, know, letter opener. This is actually kind of upsetting to me. It's you can't even. I guess you use it as a letter <laughs> opener, but you get a fork, but you can't use it as a fork. <laughs> that actually upsets me. Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Nah, like man. someone thought this would be a someone thought this would be a good idea. It's like, yo, we're making cup of noodles. We should make a fork to eat those cup of noodles. Like, wait, wait, wait. What if instead of using the fork to eat it, we make it so big that you can't feasibly use it for anything? <laughs> That's genius. Nah. We should only make thirty of them. Yeah. Like it's someone thought of this. Yeah. Someone in Japan thought of it, man. Square Enix. Yeah. So yeah, and that just goes to my point about um <clears throat> Square Enix as a company. Um I look forward to their stuff. They make some good stuff even now, um, but I just feel like they, they kind of lost what they don't know what they're doing. Like they just kind of lost it, you know. Um, so I, hopefully right. they find it again. I I just I feel like cup noodles and giant forks. This is not the right direction to be going with your with your company. No, nah, I just I think they know exactly what they're doing, but they're just it's just not a good idea. Because, I mean, at this point, Square Enix has been around for so long. They've garnered the hearts of many. 
So they know that even if people are disappointed in them, all they have to do is talk about one game's like, oh yeah, Final Fantasy VII, uh, here's a gameplay demo. And then people are right back in their hands again. So I, they know exactly what they're doing. But, and they just know that they can take stupid risks like this and still have people. So yeah, uh, it feels <clears throat> kind of scummy to me, but you know, it's a business. What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, They're going to well, do what they can to make money. Um, real quick, I want to get uh, Augs in here real quick. I mean, I know you, you don't play Final Fantasy like super hardcore or anything, but um, I know you were telling me you were excited to play 15. That, did you get around to playing it at all or no? No, I haven't been able to play it yet. I've been uh, letting Leia play through it first. Okay. That's right. actually what she's playing right now is <laughs> she's wow. playing 15. That's some good time. Uh, right coming. There. Can we get her input on it? Does she like the game? Yeah, sure. If she wants. Hold on one sec. Cool. I'm trying to get her to, over here to talk about it. <laughs> the game's just too good, man. She can't. She can't pull away. <laughs> yeah, she's she's so busy watching them drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's serious. You know what I mean? The driving's real. <laughs> okay, she's she's here. Hello. Hey. So so we were talking about 15 and uh, Final Fantasy and uh just their business practices so you know we talk about a fork and stuff that's not important what's what's important right now is <laughs> 15 how do you feel about the game do you like it yes or no uh yes why do you uh like it oh um well i mean the last games that i played were like 10 10 2 and like maybe 7 and 8 yeah and i just think it's interesting um like the graphics and everything's bigger mm. and like the um I guess hack and slash kind of thing is yeah. totally like a departure from the, what they did before. <laughs> do you, um, cause yeah, cause they, they have been, they've been changing it. Uh, cause it was turn-based. It was turn-based, very fantasy, like supernatural stuff. But this one's the first one where it's more like uh, realism. They have cell phones, they got cars, it's open world. It's like an action game. I mean, and I, because I remember when that happened, when they changed it from from a turn based action game, everyone was like, "Oh my god, you can't do this!" Like they were so mad about it. But I was like, "That's cool. I like action games. I like open world games." So I was looking forward to it. But when I played it, I thought like it was crazy. It was really fun gameplay wise, but I felt like the store was kind of man wasn't as good as the other ones. But all, like all those changes, like I mean, are you for like because because you, you played the other games are you for that stuff like do you really like the changes that they've made do you think that's pushing yes. it in a better direction or uh i feel like it'd be hard to tell for me now because i haven't like finished the game yet but okay. it's like been an interesting experience i mean i i do like the classic like turn-based system but mm -hmm. it's interesting to switch it up and i can't really comment much on the story yet but right. um yeah how far are you in the game I'm only on chapter five because I keep doing the side quest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel like I was the same way. I, I got like, I was so over leveled. I kept doing side quests that by the time I got to the final boss, I think I like beat it in two minutes or something. Um, uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I just, I kept, I was like, you, I kept doing all the side quests, like they were just fun. So I was like so overpowered that it was so easy, you know? So. Right, right. Um, cool. All right. Well, thanks for making your guest appearance on our podcast. It, it, it means a lot. Yeah, it's fun. All right. <clears throat> well, I guess a uh, real quick question for you, Alex. Since you haven't played 15 or I guess the other Final Fantasy games, are you looking forward to still play? Do you still want to play it or do you kind of have trepidation since all this stuff is going on or I don't know, anything? Yeah, I still want to play it. Like I, I didn't play any of the old ones, but mm -hmm. like I know how they play. Like I played a uh, Bravely Default, and I've played a bunch yeah. of other like RPG style games like yeah. that, like turn based. Mm -hmm. But I really like hack and slashes, like how this one seems to play anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually really excited to give it a try. I'm just letting her play through it first. Cool, kind of like testing the waters and stuff. You know, I feel you. I got you. Yeah, she's she actually wanted to play it a lot more than I did. So when I got it for Christmas, I let her play it. That's it, man. That's that's being a good, it's being a, it's being a good boyfriend, man. That's it. Some priorities, man. Yeah. Nah, man. Got to go for those greed plays. You can play when I'm done, and then never start it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you, you play when I'm done and never start. Like, what kind of wrathful, just prideful, sinister crap is that, man? Oh my god. Yep. 
that's it. All right. So real quick, the last uh, Final Fantasy news we have is um, they finally announced that Dissidia uh, is coming to PS4. At a, like a, almost like a backhanded announcement. Uh, it was during an interview for something else entirely. <laughs> and the guy who was there was one of the directors working on um, Dissidia, the arcade version. And he was basically like, oh, yeah, we're making it for PS4. So he basically confirmed it kind of backhandedly. But then it was like, whoa, well, because well, because they said originally that when they first made the original one for the arcade, they're supposed to be it was supposed to be an arcade for about a year, and then afterwards they would release it for home consoles, like so like on PS4 and stuff. It's been over a year because I think it came out in twenty fourteen or the beginning of twenty fifteen, something like that. Um, <clears throat> so they're like, well, it's not ready to show yet. We can't show you any footage of it. It's still in development, which. I think it's kind of strange because they built it for the arcade, but the arcade um, architecture that they built it with is very much like like the PS4. So it kind of feels like, well, they should be able to have something to show because it shouldn't be that different, you know. Um, but uh, they did say they're definitely adding a story mode to it, and so that could be where the bulk of that development time is going. You know, you know, getting voice acting, doing cutscenes, figuring out the story mode, how it's going to work. Um, and there's also going to be other enhancements, uh, air quotes. They said they want to make it like an esports game, make it as big as like something like that. People can go to tournaments for it. So well, that's that's pretty cool. As someone that played the the the, the Dissidia games on the PSP back in the day, I've been looking forward to this new one because like it's like Dissidia, but now it's in glorious, beautiful HD. But it's in the arcades only, so I haven't been able to play because I don't I don't I don't live in Japan. I live in you know the U.S. So uh, it finally coming to PS4 really excites me. It's just weird that. They didn't announce it. They just like, oh yeah, backhandedly, oh yeah, we're making it. You know, you could have announced that at the uh, at the anniversary event, but they didn't. So it just seems kind of weird to me. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's going back to what I was saying earlier about they're just not trying to reveal their hand. They just want to keep some cards hidden so that they can announce it later mm -hmm. to get people's interest back in when they need it. Um, he was probably just saying in the interview. He was probably just saying, yeah, it's still in the works, but we don't have much of it to show right now which is why they didn't talk about it right um on the talk of the esports thing uh, i kind of want to see how that would turn out because i remember from the first decidia game it was like if you're using custom characters like custom builds and stuff like that the game was super imbalanced so yeah kind of want to see how they'll manage something like that yeah, with the EX gauge and all that stuff, it wasn't fair at all. So I don't know how they'd make it because now because now it's three on three, so it's even worse. I, I don't know how they'd make that a balanced experience. But you know, if they want to go for it, um, I'm down. I'm down to play it and hopefully get good and go to tournaments and win money and become rich and successful, or not just play it and lose all all day. That that works. <laughs> <laughs> that was like 100 back down to zero. It's like you know I could win everything. Or I could just go home and say, you know, well, there's always next time. Yeah, yeah, I could just play it alone, never be anyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is exciting. And, and, and to your point, though, that's true, because Square Enix has had a bad habit of announcing games way too early. Um, 15 being a big example, they announced Verse 13 back in 2006, and now we're just now getting it now. And um, Kingdom Hearts 3 is another one where it's like, I think they announced the game way too early, we're not going to get it for a while, so... They've had a habit of that, so I, I so I can see them saying, "Well, let's hold off and wait until we know it's going to come out in like next five months, you know, and then announce that it's coming out or whatever." So that, that makes sense. I definitely see that. Um, yeah, because going off that point, they also just did it with the Final Fantasy VII remake, where right? it was yeah. announced what like a year or two ago now, but we still have no signs of that coming out in any amount of reasonable time. So yeah. Yeah, they announced it, and there hasn't been that many. The, actually, there hasn't been any news for it. Um, we assume it's coming out sometime this year, just because this is the big 20th anniversary for that game. But they might even make it in time for that. You know what I mean? It might come out next year. So, yeah, ho hopefully this is a. I, hopefully, I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking at it positively, hoping that this is this is a good sign for them. They're learning, they're learning their lesson. They won't announce it too early. They're gonna hold hold off on it. Um, but it's also like, well, what do they have? So, but yeah, that's. Who knows? All right. What the heck? <laughs> um, all right, so moving on. That was it, really, as far as news. The only other big thing that happened this week was the release of Fire Emblem Heroes, which I got to play yesterday. It's uh, it's live now. Go download it. It's free to play, so you can download it right away on your phone. Um, I want to let Al talk about this a lot because um, I know you were playing it like freaking crazy. You actually almost beat it yeah. already, so... Uh, yeah, I'm, I think 
I think I'm on the last level. This, from looking at the achievements, you can go like the last thing you get rewarded for is like nine dash five. Yeah. So, but I just beat like all the February quests. Uh-huh. So I think so it, it like switched over to like more quests after I completed those. So I mm-hmm. think there's more past nine dash five. Oh. But as of right now, I think this is the last level. Yeah, I was playing it yesterday, all day yesterday, and uh, yeah, I saw that it went to nine. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and I was kind of worried at first. I was like breezing through them. I was like, got to like one, two, and three. But now I'm on like number four, I think, with one you, one you fight Crom and all of them from Awakening, and uh, it's hard, man. Like it's really freaking hard. <clears throat> and um, I didn't, cause you know. You're taking something that's pretty pretty complex, like like Fire Emblem's all the systems with the with with, with the uh, the weapon triangle and like all the different gear and everything, all these characters. You're taking that, combining like every game in the series basically, and then putting it on mobile. So I was like, is this gonna really this is gonna be a really simplified version of it? And it is simple, but it's also super complex still. And that's that, I think that's one of the reasons why I think it's actually kind of cool because it's simple, it's very mobile heavy. It's it's you know the maps are smaller. Um, you you only can, you only have four characters on uh, on your team at a time, so it's a lot smaller, but it still finds a way to be crazy complex. Still, it requires a lot of thinking and strategy. So, I think they did a pretty good job with it. I'm actually really happy with it. Um, did you have you played it at all, or have you seen? You know what we're talking about? Have you seen it at all, Jav- uh, Javon? Or yeah, sleep? I've seen it. Um, I've heard nothing about well i've heard mostly good things about it the yeah. only things that uh i heard that haven't been good are the way that um i guess getting new heroes is because of the randomness in it like it's always a gamble of whether or not you're gonna get the character that you want so i mean apart from that i haven't really heard anything bad i mean i remember reading somewhere it made the game made well <clears throat> over like two million dollars in its first day so really that's like incredible like that's wow. for a mobile game like that's blew my mind especially for something free so yeah, yeah. well these 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 free-to-play games where we like roll to get characters have been crushing it i know one piece has their one dragon ball z has one too um a lot of these games have been doing that and uh, they've been crushing it but yeah so it's my first time playing one of those kind of games i i crashed away from mobile games just because I don't know, I'm just not into that stuff. But I played it, and I could I could already feel the 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 addiction rolling in. You know, the uh, <laughs> you have to spend these orbs to get characters, and those orbs are literally crack cocaine. I swear. You know, I would do these missions, being like, I need that orb. Just I, I just I need one more orb. I need one more orb. <laughs> like it, it became this addiction. You know. Um, and yeah. yeah, isn't it like you get one orb every five minutes of downtime or something like that? No. Uh, the orbs are like, it's basically the premium currency, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm thinking of stamina. Yeah, stamina is the one that that's like the typical mobile like limiter. Yeah. So you're not like dumping endless hours in it, like grinding forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, how it works is, and I and I don't know because I, I I get not as far as you, Alex, but how I've seen it is you typically you get one orb per story mission. And there's other stuff you can do, like if you complete these certain achievements, like you beat uh, certain story mission a certain way, or you beat uh, the training mode five times, whatever. You may get like one additional orb. Um, when you first boot it up, you get like three orbs at once. But after that, it's pretty limiting. I've I've seen you only really get orb from story missions, and like and like I was saying, they start they start getting harder and harder. So it gets harder to get new characters because you have to be able to beat the the mission. Um, and you can't, you know, if you can't be like, oh, let's just re-roll and get better characters. You can't do that if you don't have any orbs. So I feel like there's that wall in place that's going to make you buy, make you spend money on characters. But if you're good, you don't have to. Um, <clears throat> so like I rolled and I got a char- bunch of characters I didn't even, I've never even heard of, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I'll, I'll be frank. I'll be, be completely transparent with everyone w- listening. Uh, I played Fire Emblem Awakening and Fire Emblem uh, Fates. But I did not play the other games. I know who like Marth is, and I can always characters from Smash Bros. And I, 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 I even know who some of the characters who aren't in Smash Bros. are. But I never played the very you know all the plethora of Fire Emblem games. So um, I got a bunch of characters that I'm like I don't even know who this guy is. He has like an axe, Bart or something. Like I like I got these characters and I don't know who they are. 
Um, and they're cool, but <clears throat> they're like, okay, you know, they don't have the best stats. Um, I saw your post <laughs> that you did, you freaking rolled and got like Roy and uh, some other characters. I'm like, how the, how the, how the fuck you do that? How, how, how'd you do that? You know? So, um, yeah, complete luck. That's all it was. <laughs> Bull. It's completely shit. lucky. Man, you need, to, you need to share some of that luck, man. Because <laughs> I need it. Because, yeah, right now, yeah, so right now I'm on the level where we have to fight Krom from, from Awakening. And, um, or that the, the, that whole world, I guess. Because you, you how the story where it is, is you go to the different worlds of the various heroes. It actually reminds me a lot of Fate Say Night and that concept where you can summon heroes to fight for you. Um, similar, it's like the exact same story. But um, you're, I'm in that world right now, and like, yeah, it, it's starting to get really freaking hard. And I feel like I think I'm playing the game wrong because I tend to try and level up all my units equally. But I think you're supposed to really prioritize certain units over others. That way, they can have, you know, you can have very clear like favorites, and that's how they level up faster. Cause right now, I'm, I'm at a wall because everyone's the same level, and no one's really progressing. So I don't know. Yeah, that's um, I ran into that like early on too, where um. Yeah, it starts getting really hard, and I noticed that the um, story missions actually outlevel you very quickly. Yeah, like when you start when you start reaching like the end of um, each of the uh, reach the end of each of the levels, mm. like it goes from like 16, 16, and it goes seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and like you're not gonna level all your units up in those like previous levels and it yeah. gets it actually that's why it like starts getting really hard mm -hmm. and yeah that thing about like having a favorite hero that works but when you start hitting like the end game stuff that mm -hmm. does not work because everything gets like they th start throwing even more powerful units at you Jeez. and you really need to take in consideration the weapon triangle so you have to have like basically one of each type maybe even double up depending on like what units you're gonna fight mm -hmm. which is that's actually pretty nice that they tell you ahead of time like you're gonna fight these guys so you can like pre-prepare your team in case right. like you have like something that could get easily destroyed but yeah like you really have to have like a clear idea of what you're gonna go into before mm -hmm. you like at least starting to get into the end game stuff yeah that's the one thing this game makes me feel so freaking stupid you know <laughs> Like, yeah, it's like so simple, but like at the same time, like the smallest mistake will just cost you a unit, and yeah. then you're just like, SOL. Yeah, like I feel like, oh, I got this, and then I just get destroyed, and I'm like, how, how do I do this? But then like I'll do it again and be like, oh, okay, that's how you beat it. You know what I mean? So I just feel like I just feel retarded when I play with this game because I feel like I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But um, yeah, it, it's definitely lots. It's definitely lots of fun if you're into strategy games like Final Fantasy Tactics or I mean or Fire Emblem I mean, if, you, if you play those games you like it I mean right at home um it's definitely a cool way to just kind of play it on the go you know if you're on a train or I don't know on your break or something you want to play Fire Emblem real quick you can pull it up and play it and because it's like I think I think I like it because it's because it's so strategy focused it, it's kind of like playing like Sudoku or something or playing chess you, know, you can kind of, kind of whip it out real quick play some like mind bending games and then put it away and i i think it's a really cool um idea and as far as the rolling um i guess we got to see how it goes further because at this point i know this is there's a section where you can fight other players but they're not like actually playing with you online it's more like you can play like their teams um so i think it's balanced because it's just you you're just playing you know the computer so if you want to get stronger faster or not that's on you but like they haven't implemented any kind of system where you can fight other players at least not to my knowledge so when they do that it might become broken at that point because then it's like okay well this you you have units that you you know you have more units than me or they're more leveled or whatever so maybe they'll figure that out um but right now i'm definitely having a lot of fun with it. it's definitely pretty fun so uh would you would you play it javon would you would you would you play this game um i'm not really into tactic games a lot i mean i'd probably check it out because it's free and yeah. i have nothing to lose it's yeah. not like i'd have to make a big investment just to be able to give it a shot mm -hmm. um and I, generally it's not my type of game but i could see myself just giving it a chance later on mm -hmm. yeah it's it's definitely something yeah you can just download it play it um I actually recorded about an hour of footage of it on my phone. Um, so I might upload that to the channel. Uh, check out, uh, stay tuned for that. I'm not sure if I'm going to upload it or not. 
as like a collab or something. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it runs well. I noticed my phone never really got too hot when I played it either. Um, I'm playing on a Galaxy S7, so I'm not sure if that you know what that means for you and your phone. But uh, it runs pretty well. Didn't, my phone didn't feel slower or anything, so it's pretty op- well optimized too. So yeah, it's, it's not a bad you know it's not it's not a bad game at all. I think it's pretty pretty nice. Um, yeah, it's nice that it doesn't eat up a lot of battery either because everything is like 2D and mm-hmm. it's not very taxing on your phones. So it's not like Pokemon Go where you have it open for like five minutes and then you're down 10%, you know? <laughs> this game, you can actually sit for like a solid 30 minutes and lose like 5% battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it uh it doesn't eat it up, you know? And that's cool. Because like I said, I was just, I remember da- I downloaded it and then I was like, oh, let's check it out real quick just to kind of get enough information for the podcast. And then I was like, no, I, I actually couldn't stop playing it. I actually found myself playing it a lot. And I got through that first hour pretty fast. And then, yeah, my phone was fine. It, didn't, it wasn't hot or anything. So um, I think it's a pretty good achievement for what it is. For, for how much stuff's actually in the game, I think it's a pretty good achievement. So cool. Well, that's it. I didn't have any other news stories at all or anything else on my list. I said, like I said, it was a pretty short week uh, this week. Um, next week, we're going to have probably more stuff because we have Neo. That looks awesome. I'm going to play that a lot. Um, actually, some people who already got copies of the game early, so they're playing it already. Lucky bastards. So that's cool. Um, John Wick comes out on Friday, as well as Lego Batman. So I'm probably doing, doing reviews for those. So I'm pretty excited. Um, but yeah, do you guys have any closing thoughts or anything else you, anything else you want to say about the week and this new all the news this week or anything like that or anything at all? Nope. Nah, man. I'm good. <laughs> all right well thanks thanks so much for watching you guys it's been cool hanging out with you guys and talking nerd stuff with you um if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button really appreciate that you know that's what all big youtubers say so i'll say it too um and as you know <laughs> and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this we put a new episode of the podcast i think i'm gonna shoot for every monday every monday or at least in the beginning of the week um every week we have a new episode of the podcast and i do uh movie reviews video game reviews breakdowns news all that stuff so look out for all that stuff and uh yeah until next time i'll see you guys later bye